We're back here at the NRA National Farms Museum here at NRA headquarters. I'm with Phil Schreier, senior curator of the museum. And Phil, the museum is open. There's people going on around us. I love doing these here, right here at the museum. Uh, it's, it, there's so much great energy and, and great, especially here in the Peterson Gallery. It, it gets me excited to be here. What also has me curious today, Phil, is why are you holding that picture in your hand? Can you tell us? <laughs> I'm holding a number of pictures in uh -huh. my hand today, John. Uh, yeah, I thought we'd take a different tack uh, for the next month of Curator's Corners. I love you know, surprises, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a big one. This is a cool one, at least, I think. Uh, you know how uh, Turner Classic Movies has a star of the month. Right. Uh, so I thought that we ought to have a star of the month on nice. Curator's Corner. Excellent. And uh, on October 22nd uh, was the 100th anniversary of the birthday of, of Andre Fishman. Uh, Andre Friedman, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, who is better known to the world as, as Robert Kappa. Oh. He was perhaps the, uh, the most uh, famous war correspondent in the history of the uh, photojournalism. Wow. And this is a, a neat picture of him with uh, uh, Ernest Hemingway taken, uh, taken on D-Day. Uh, he was with the first wave on, uh, on Omaha Beach. And uh, wow. you know, Kappa uh, is one of my heroes. Uh, yeah, the whole reason why, remember I went to Iraq was to... Right, I was going to say, we talk now about embedded journalists. I mean, they did war correspondence back then. Uh, they used to get involved sometimes, they had to, to help out or sometimes to save their lives. Absolutely. And now, uh, you know, Kappa originally rose to prominence, uh, prominence with uh, this photograph. It's called The Falling Soldier. Uh, yeah. And it's a, a picture of a, a Spanish Republican mm. in, uh, in September 1936. Uh, and Kappa writes that he didn't even know he had taken the photo. Wow. Uh, until it was developed and he actually saw it in the magazine. Yeah. And, and a different time it was because you would shoot pictures, you'd have to get them developed. It wasn't like on your digital camera where your kid's going, show me the picture, show me the picture, exactly. show me the picture. Wow. So what I thought we'd do for the next month is we'll take a look at some iconic photos that Kappa took during his uh, years as a war correspondent and uh, examine the guns that are in them. Perfect, I love So uh, here we have uh, this, uh, this Spanish soldier, and uh, this picture was taken uh, just a few moments earlier, and you can see, you know, here in the top center, the same individual wow. uh, with a, uh, a rifle, and that rifle is the uh, model of 1893 uh, Spanish Mauser. Oh, um, wow. This gun was, uh, uh, commonly used uh, by both sides uh, during the Spanish Civil War, which lasted from 1936 to 1939. Uh, there were two, two sides, the, uh, the uh, Republican side, uh, which that soldier uh, belonged to, uh, which was also called the, the Loyalists, mm -hmm. or also by their detractors, the Reds, or the Communist side, and then uh, the Fascist side, or the uh, Nationalists side, the ones that had actually overthrown the, uh, the pre-existing government. Now, being a Mauser, it's bolt action. It's a bolt action. Uh, this is the same Mauser uh, that Theodore Roosevelt encountered in, Spain, in uh, Cuba in 1898. Uh -huh. And in this gun, this Mauser, it fires seven uh, by 57 millimeter uh, rounds. This was the gun that was so effective against the uh, against the Rough Riders and the other members of the, uh, of the United States Ar Army going through Cuba, uh, that they decided to abandon the Krag Jorgensen and go with a more Mauser-based design. And so this gun is really wow. the father of the 1903 uh, Springfield so rifle. Sort of, a, in, in, in farm terms, this is sort of a domino that tipped and caused changes because of, of how effective that rifle was. That's right. And, and now explain when you say, because Mauser German, when you say Spanish Mauser, is that uh, something to do with where it was manufactured, where it was used, or what does that mean? No, well, it could mean either or. In this case, it means that it was actually manufactured by Mauser in Oberndorf, mm -hmm. uh, but it was manufactured for the Spanish contract. Okay. So there was a special uh, model uh, that the Spaniards said that they wanted and so that this gun uh, was, was made to uh, fulfill the, uh, the details of that contract. This is a great sound when you rack that action back yeah. uh, with a Mauser, just so solid sounding and, and uh, wow, it's, it's impressive. But the Spanish Civil War saw 
a, uh, a myriad of, of different firearms from the Winchester 1895 that Stalin had helped uh, send into the Republican side uh, to uh, the, the Spanish Mausers, uh, regular Mausers, the Germans and Italians sent troops in. So it was quite the international uh, uh, boiling uh, melting pot for, uh, for, for armed aggression between 1936 and 39. So an iconic weapon, firearm, and an iconic photo. So, wow, what a great way to step up. Phil, you've done it again. Oh, thank you, you John. I, I try to come to these things, and, and, and not, to, not to say light of myself, but to try to know as little as I can about what you have planned. And it worked <laughs> again. I'm, I'm loving it, just like I hope you folks are at home at Sportsman Channel are loving it as well. All right, what do you have to do to come and see this, uh, this Spanish Mauser, Phil? Well, John, the, uh, the National Firearms Museum uh, has 3,000 guns, including this one on display. It's open seven days a week from 9.30 to 5. There's plenty of parking. Uh, it's free admission. And uh, if you can't get to us off the interstate in Fairfax, Virginia, uh, visit us on the internet 24-7 uh, at nramuseum.com. And don't forget to visit us at the National Sporting Arms Museum in Br uh, Springfield, Missouri. And that, too, is open uh, seven days a week. Awesome. All right, here we go. Another great thematic uh, month here of, of Curator's Corners here on Sportsman Channel. Phil, thank you so much. I'm excited to come back and see more next week. Thank you, John.